Hey everybody, we are back again, and today we are going to talk about um, really how to how to stall properly and how to come back from a deficit, which is something I think a lot of people don't really touch on too well. Um, and I'm not going to talk too much about you know play by play. You guys can just watch until uh, we get to the stalling part, um, and you know. You guys have these scenarios where you might fuck up early game. It happens to all of us. And, you know, you gotta go stall. But you might not know how to. Um, this is the game to learn how to stall effectively. And, you know, I, I really want to comment on these ice shield changes. You know, they're going to make ice shield for use only rather than... Um, you know, just recharge every five turns. I think that's a really bad... I don't know how bad it is, but, like... Really what it does is it affects your late-game stalling ability. So, like, past turn... I want to say, like, 35, 30. Around turn 30, 35, you tend to use all your ice shields. Uh, at least four of them, right? And... What that's going to do is it's going to mess it up. So that, uh... You know, you can't, you can't stall as effectively past, like, turn 30, 35. Which is going to make aggro bugs a little stronger. Um, and it's going to make competing for top control a little stronger, which is going to help fight flightless folks a lot more, too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, consider all this to be just kind of a nerf to those late game, you know, moments. Um, but yeah, I think we're both running Shock Shield books here in this game. And the thing with Falcos is he, he doesn't like Pebble. Um, he's somebody that prefers to deflight more creatively. And... He is someone that will prefer to just flash down towards you or something like that. Um, set up top, set up his top minions, get them really healthy, get them really set up, and then go after you. This is in contrast, you know, some players like Nickere, even if they're fl running flightless, they always incorporate pebbles into their books. So there's a play style difference. Um, I don't know. I When I play Falcos, at least in the past, I... I um, and this is really for anyone, it's not just Falcos, I take a lot of experimental books, so I don't know how much of that I really have been punishing much in the past, but um, you know, fuck up a VFTP there, you gotta practice your VFTPs, it's a core skill, but You guys are going to see soon um, some fuck ups on my end. And then, you know, the whole video, the whole point of the video is, uh, oh, I didn't fuck that up. The whole point of the video is to show, you know, what do you guys do when you're like in the shitter? Like what's the, what's the optimal sequence of moves? Um, how do you stall effectively against your opponent? And how do you even like get a lead from all that shit, you know, it's like one thing to stall, it's another thing, look at that beautiful ice shield, by the way, you know, that's what, ice shield number two, this is like, ice shield just has so many amazing uses, and there's no point in like holding it off, um, and not making a play like that, like not burning a BFTP from them, you know, so I feel like what what's going to happen is, oftentimes you use ice shield early, early game, you burn BFTPs from them or something like that. Um, and you know. They want to take that away, man. They want to make the game brain dead. Um, so here, what, what you see is, this is my big fuck up. I, I, actually, I pressed Q by, like I, I skipped my turn by accident. Um, so I basically did nothing this turn. Um, that really sucks. That really, really, really sucks. Because I could have summoned the DK if I summon the DK, at the very least, I could have taken out his DK or threatened him, um, depending on his positioning, because I would have had 
you know, either DK or um, forced his DK to, like, kill my DK. But I wouldn't have been fucked over like this. So now, you know, if you guys ever press Q in your games, um, like I just did, or you really mess up early game, um, now the question is, how do you stall that? How do you get out of that deficit? Um, it's not that complex. I think there's a few things to really note. Um, one is you want to be constantly getting minions out. And you need to prioritize how you want to... You want to first prioritize minions over things like uh, prot shield um, when you can. Because if I prot shielded here, right, and then he did something like he would go and kill my Pegasus or something like that, um, now this space will be open. I just have like a prot shield and I'd be kind of screwed. So it's, it's always good to basically... Um, get minions out because they could act as uh, objects to block off this entryway. Um, Prot Shield is actually one of the uh, lower prioritizations. Um, so yeah. And here, since his shit is 15 HP, he's going to be inclined to swarm it, which is okay. Uh, dealing with his undead Pegasus is okay, be simply because... Um, you know, you have Shock Shield next turn, and, you know, I think he's going to try to stack it so it doesn't start off at 25 HP. But, um, you know, these types of things are, like, okay, typically speaking. Um, and you see, he doesn't go for the Swarm, because he's, like, he wants to block off my Pegasus, and then he wants to also trap my Swarm. This is, you could call this a mistake if you really want to. You could say that the better move would have been to put the swarm, like, right under the Pegasus. And that's what I really what I mean. Like, sometimes 60G just comes down to the little moves, right? Um, but that's okay, because we can do this. And for some reason, he stayed mounted on his, uh, on his Pegasus. I found that really interesting for him to just stay mounted like that. I think maybe, you know, just low time or something. Um, but he stayed mounted there. And I, I, it didn't really matter. I mean, he could get out anyway. So, But I just found that peculiar. So next turn, his swarm takes damage there. I put up the shock shield before I do any, like, protection shielding. Because I realized that, you know, if I protection shield is... I need to basically counteract his uh, rush, if so to speak. If I can counteract um, the, the momentum he has going, that's more, more important than getting 50 HP, especially knowing that he doesn't take pebbles. You know, he's just one of those players that don't. Um, so he, yeah, like I said, he's the type of player that likes to just flash towards you. Um, and you, I get my Undead Pegasus out here um, I don't go and shock shield this. The reason I shock shielded was, um, I need to anticipate for the next, let's say, a uh, few turns, whether or not he's going to, you know, come at me, um, from like this side or something, how aggressive he might be. And it's just good to have, like if he stood here and you flash to the bottom left, um, and really try to like come at me. That shock shield basically uh, stops that, right? So the good news is I have an undead Pegasus, which is really, really effective. Um, bad news is he has top control and um, more HP than me, right? Um, he has just better positioning, right? Um, what I want to do is right now... Flash that open, basically free to swarm, free to Pegasus. Um, and notice, like, he can't just put his DK on top of, like, the peg one, for, for starters, his Pegasus is here, it's blocking that. That's what the tree did. But even if it wasn't, and he tried to, like, move his Pegasus down like this and, like, chop it, 
the shock shield swarm is like threatens that what he's going for here is he's basically like okay i'm gonna have um i'm gonna have two dark knights and i'm gonna use one as bait and the other one is like what i'm gonna use to kill you right so he, it's like a double queen strategy coming from him um which is an interesting strategy for sure definitely an interesting strategy more or less a double queen um i say queen because dark knight tends to be that one piece that you know is like that game changer um that like you really want to kill right um just make an analogy to chess but yeah i think these trees he's sending out here don't do too much for him as he might think um yes he's blocking off the swarm but the swarm's not really a threat to him in any way a 10 hp swarm um so you know i just get my health back and eventually i'm gonna flash this out anyways and just kill my own swarm and not care right i think him protection shielding there is basically admission that um you know i can't really get to you um and this is gonna stall out so this is what i mean like these books that don't take pebbles man like if he had pebbles this would have been hard for him to press his lead i think what he, his counter argument is you only really need you pebbles when um when you're basically uh already winning or whatever so you should be able to win in other ways just like flashing or whatever and i'm like okay but uh there's games where you know i think it's okay to press your lead like that he's just someone that like would prefer to just have spells that win top more rather than deal with side hiding okay so he tends to he, he opts to flash this free his pegasus and now i'm just like nope that shit's staying um and what i want him to do is i want him to keep flashing down right he keeps flashing down and then um eventually i'm gonna be in a good spot So I kill my own swarm there because it's useless to me trapped and I need to, I need to free my Pegasus. That's really important to free my Pegasus there. If I free my Pegasus, um, it's really easy for me to trap that undead Pegasus with an ice shield. And he, he understands that too. So he's like, no, I don't want you to free that shit. Um, but Pegasus is just one of those minions. Which is really core to stalling. If you really want to stall, you use Pegasus. Oh. But yeah, so now this Dark Knight's healthy. He wants to get this Dark Knight to be as healthy as possible. Um, so that it can potentially come and kill, kill my Dark Knight or kill me. And then he'll have an undead Pegasus and Dark Knight. Maybe a swarm or two on the top. Um, he'll have that mini advantage and he'll be able to press it against me and just kind of win. Um, that's really his strategy. I get my Dark Knight healthy so that it doesn't just die to some bullshit charge. Like they have to do a, a really targeted charge to kill a 160 HP Dark Knight. So he's able to free his Pegasus and an Ice Shield. This ice shield's not terrible for me in the sense that it still blocks off his top path. So yes, he does trap my Pegasus, but um, you know it also stops him from coming at me through the top. So it's somewhat of a double-edged sword. But again, with this ice shield change that they want to do, 
it's not going to be a a change that uh you know everyone's just going to stop taking ice shield you still need ice shield and 60 grassy um it's still like one of those really core spells so here i'm kind of baiting the charge i kind of want to bait the charge a little bit because i know it won't kill it's not a great bait i should have probably put him like to the edge right here um but again freeing this undead pegasus is so core and he he's playing this badly where he he's putting flash damage on the dark knight he has but i guess he doesn't care too much about it um Yeah. I don't know why this shit says he has four out of four minions. Oh yeah, he does. I'm an idiot. Okay. Um Yeah. So he puts up another protection shield. Really the point of these protection shields here is like, okay, I'm gonna flash towards you and I wanna make sure I can do so. So what I do is instead of opting to wait for him to charge towards me and flash towards me, I take the initiative to charge towards him. I stand over the water like this, um, and I'm perfectly okay if he takes his Dark Knight and he charges me. I'm not sure it will even like deflight me, but even if it does, um, that shit is going to sink, right? And I'm okay with that kind of trade, because that would mean my Dark Knight survives. Now, if my Dark Knight uh, gets killed here, look at his positioning. Look at, look at his positioning. His positioning is bad here. So he puts his Undead Pegasus trade here should block off his entry entryway right like here as he charges or like right here um just giving me as little room as possible by making a move like this you know and what he could be thinking is okay i'm gonna bait him because i want these two trapped i don't want him to, to have access to these two minions and i want him to like go up top side right uh, that's more likely what he's probably trying to do um sometimes you want to leave things open just as bait and this is a move where he's kind of stuck. Like, he has to make two moves to get out of this situation. One, he, he has to charge out. But then if he charges out, his Pegasus can't reach and grab his DK anyways. So this is a really good tree by me. I think the only way to stop this is to potentially um, maybe charge a little differently. But I don't really see how that's possible. Made a mistake here in not putting my Undead Pegasus a little closer to the right to to block off that swarm but that's just something that happens in 60 grassy um you're not gonna make every movement in positioning play perfectly um so he has shock shield he pops it there that's fine um and you know this is you know this is the beauty of ice shield here right like you can either waste bftps from them or something right and since he didn't take the initiative to free his Dark Knight or flash towards his Black Knight or anything, he's kind of screwed in that sense where, um, you know, he has to spend maybe two turns to get that Dark Knight free. I basically sacrificed my Dark Knight for one of his. Um, and by that, by doing that sacrifice on my own terms and not waiting for him to flash towards me, um... I basically secured an advantage there. So one option he has is he could just wait for this tree to die and then flash it, and then his Pegasus can come save it. Um, I definitely want to free my Pegasus. My undead Pegasus is very important here. Um, very, very, very important. The swarm is also kind of stuck here. Um, so flashing out basically frees that too. If I'm him, you know, maybe I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to shock bomb suicide or some shit. Um, I don't know. There's there's different options here. And again, you see like his positioning. So he puts his swarm here or his under the Pegasus here. He doesn't want me to get my swarm out because my swarm can kill his swarm. And that would be bad for him. So he's forced to put it here. But really what he wants to do is he wants to trap this part right here. Which he might be able to do with his um with his swarm, right? So that's a mistake on his end, not putting his swarm right here to block off my Pegasus. Because now that my Pegasus is free and I can regain topside like this, um 
I can get my swarm out from the bottom here. So that's like oversight on his end where he's not even thinking straight. If he just put his Pegasus here, neither myself or my Pegasus can come out from here. But putting his Pegasus here, well, I can still, all three of my minions can come out from here. Now I can get my undead Pegasus, trap his shit, um, summon another Pegasus, eat the swarm damage like here, um, and then his shit's gonna die next turn. He can't get his Dark Knight out, so that was basically a wasted turn for him. And I've successfully flipped the tables where I was stalling at the bottom and then he made, I think he made um, a mistake with the Paladin positioning so that I could even charge it in the first place. And then he also made a mistake um, in terms of the his minion positioning, like as he was trying to get to me. So I attempt this R stack here. I, I don't get it um you know whatever i have to keep his pegasus trapped there um and you know a, a very safe play is to just you know put um put up a shock shield right here the reason i put my my swarm all the way to the left here is because i i realize he can just move his pegasus to the left and then you know swarm me but if i put my swarm all the way to the left here by the time he moves his shit over um i can go go here, use a minion or ice shield or whatever, and block off this so that I effectively take out his swarm without using up a turn. So like he could swarm me here or swarm my Pegasus here, right? But a better move is to kill my swarm. Now, if my swarm was here, that'd be really easy for him. He can kill it here and then move his shit back. But the fact that he has to lug his, sh his ass all the way over to the left side of the map um, to get my swarm means that he's not going to have that much time to make his own type of play. This is something you guys have to do in 60G too. Um, really use time against your opponents and make their moves uh, suboptimal. You know, because for him to like lug his swarm back, that means he's not going to have time. Like he barely had time right there. Um, so, okay. I see all that and... Okay, I opt to basically put my Pegasus there so that if he does hit my Pegasus with his swarm, you know, that's an undead candidate right there. And then I opt to just tree him. Um, and like, just like that, I feel like, you know, I've regained topside control. Um, I've regained map control. He does have an advantage on me in terms of protection shields and whatnot. Um, and right now in terms of minions, but with Shock Shield and the 100 HP minion cap, you can re easily reduce that advantage. This is one thing I also don't like. I don't like the fact that they're making Undead Pegasus to be 125 HP. Um, it's just gonna make it kind of much harder to basically uh, kill these guys. I think being able to kill them with a Shock Shield Shock Bomb is probably really fair. And here we put up the draw and we draw. So, um, no, I didn't want to waste my time basically getting to him. And this was by mid-game, right? So, hope you guys learned something about kind of how to dance around stalling, um, how to bait, how to potentially, uh, what to prioritize when you're stalling too. Like, uh, shock shields, basically prioritizing offense sometimes so that they can't come to you. Um, as hastily, right? Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed.